Once upon a time, in a small village nestled amidst towering mountains, lived a kind-hearted and intelligent girl named Bella. Unlike the other girls in her village, Bella wasn't interested in adornments or luxury. She was passionate about books and knowledge. Every day, she would dive into the fantasy worlds within the pages of books, traveling in spirit to distant places where love blossomed, adventures unfolded, and dreams came true. One day, during one of her visits to the old village library, Bella discovered a peculiar book unlike any she had seen before. The book was bound in old leather, its golden letters shimmering as if pulsating with life. Bella felt an irresistible pull, as if the book was calling her to open it. When she did, a mysterious map glowing with magical colors burst forth from its pages, revealing a dark castle surrounded by a dense forest. The castle itself seemed to pulse with mystery, hidden among the mist, as if waiting for someone to uncover its secrets. Little did Bella know that this book would lead her to an unexpected destiny and change her life forever. That night, her father returned home with signs of fear and dread. He told her he had lost his way in the forest and found himself before a dark castle inhabited by a terrifying beast. The beast, who was neither human nor animal, had imprisoned her father in the ominous castle and would not allow him to leave unless someone came to take his place. With unyielding determination, Bella decided to go to the castle to free her father. Unaware that her journey would take her beyond the castle walls, into a hidden world teeming with magic and strange creatures, and that she would discover much more than she ever anticipated. With steady steps, Bella ventured into the forest, her heart brimming with courage equal to the magnitude of the adventure awaiting her. With each step, the dense trees seemed to grow taller and darker, as if they wanted to swallow the light. Despite this, Bella's heart had no space for fear. Her bravery was fueled by her deep love for her father and sense of responsibility. When she arrived at the castle, she stood before the massive iron gate, which appeared not to have opened for centuries. She pushed it with her small hands, and it opened with an eerie groan, as though burdened by the weight of hidden memories and secrets. Bella cautiously entered the castle to find herself in a vast hall adorned with cold golden candelabras. The walls bore old portraits of unknown faces, and everything in the place whispered ancient stories untold. Suddenly, Bella sensed a presence. She turned swiftly to find a massive creature standing in the shadows. This was the beast with eyes that radiated anger and pain, and a voice that shook the castle's foundations. However, he was not as she had imagined. Within his eyes, Bella saw a glimpse of deep sorrow, as if something inside him was broken. The beast spoke in a thunderous voice, asking, Why have you come here? Don't you know this place is not for the living? In a calm voice, Bella replied, I have come to take my father's place. I am ready to accept my fate. The beast stepped closer, his eyes narrowing, but he couldn't help but admire the girl's courage. Without another word, he turned and led her to a dark room, which was to become her new prison. One night, as Bella sat alone in her room, she remembered the mysterious book she had found. She opened it, and the map appeared before her once again. This time, new details began to emerge that hadn't been there before. The map indicated secret passages within the castle and hidden doors leading to strange and unknown places. With renewed determination, Bella decided to explore the castle and understand the secret of the beast and how she could break the curse that enveloped this place. Thus, her journey into a world full of surprises and mysteries began where she met enchanted spirits, discovered magical secrets, and realized that what connected humans and the beast was not only the curse, but a much deeper secret. The next morning, Bella began exploring the castle using the magical map. As she wandered through the corridors, she discovered secret doors leading to rooms filled with ancient books and rare artifacts. 
In one of those rooms, Bella found an old mirror in a gilded frame that reflected not only her image but her feelings and thoughts with clarity. Bella started using this mirror to understand the beast, and through that, she began to realize that the curse was not just magic, but a punishment for a mistake made in the past. The relationship between Bella and the beast gradually changed. As the beast spoke to her cautiously, Bella realized that behind this beast lay a kind-hearted person who had suffered significant pain. Over time, she began to feel a deep sympathy for him. The beast, on the other hand, felt something he hadn't felt in a long time, hope. As Bella delved into the castle's secrets and closed in on the heart of the mystery, she learned that an evil witch, the one who cast the curse on the prince, was planning to return and regain her power. On a stormy night, as Bella and the beast were talking, a strange being appeared before them, ancient spirits from the Enchanted Kingdom, warning them of approaching danger. Thus, the great battle began. Bella and the beast stood side by side to face the evil witch and the forces of darkness that sought to control the castle and the hidden magical world. The battle was intense but filled with courage and sacrifice. Finally, Bella and the Beast, with the help of new friends, defeated the witch and broke the curse. When the clouds cleared and peace returned to the castle, the Beast transformed back into a handsome prince. However, the prince was not the same as before. He had learned an important lesson about humility and true love. Bella chose to stay by his side, not only as a lover, but as a companion in rebuilding the Lost Kingdom. Thus, Bella and the prince lived happily, not just in the castle, but in a world filled with mutual love and respect, where they learned that true beauty lies in the heart, not in outward appearance.